living in a van allows me to work less and have a lot more free time and not have to spend as much money on living expenses. And I get to live by myself and have everything how I want it. And then I get to move my whole house anywhere I want to take it, which is also super awesome. Originally, why I got into van dwelling or thought of it was um, I was a full-time transit bus driver. And where I worked, there was the bus depot and a bridge right next to it. And there was all these bus drivers living in vans and motorhomes under the bridge and people would like make fun of them and call them like the trolls who lived under the bridge but I was like man these guys are so smart like they're making so much money and they're not spending any money on rent or mortgage and I thought oh yeah I'm gonna google living in a van and um, it took like a while for it to actually manifest and my first van was a 1998 uh, Chevy Astro van who was Donovan the Astro Van. I've had it for three years, lived in it full time for two years, um, but it was a bit small. Being able to stand is really important. Uh, even though like I do travel usually every year with the van, I spend a lot of time living full time in the city and going to work. Um, and the climate here is not that nice all year. If it's really wet and rainy, I want to have a place where I can hang out all day and not feel like cramped and claustrophobic. I can pretty much walk around in here and like meditate in here and I could almost do yoga in here except I can't put my hands up. <laughs> This is my 2016 Ford Transit. Um, it's a mid-roof and it's the V6 engine with the 3.7 liter gasoline. Its name is T-Rex, T-Rex fan. We built this bulkhead wall, which is my super stealthy bulkhead. Um, my friend calls it the door to Narnia. And then over here I have a sink and the sink itself is made out of a stainless steel bowl from the dollar store that we cut a hole in. If I press this button, water comes out. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> and underneath here, I have uh, two six gallon water storage tanks in the back. And the front one is the gray tank that the sink drains into. And then over here, I've got more storage. I've got two cupboards of storage, all my stuff under there, and two drawers. This one's not finished yet. Um, the countertop is not finished yet. Uh, it's been a year's worth of work, but it's almost finished. I'm gonna have a bamboo countertop and we're gonna be putting cabinets up here. And I still have to finish all the wood. And then I have a two burner drop-in suburban stove. And I have these great LED lights that just flip on and off the switch. And there's four more at the back. And I also have a roof vent fan up here. I really wanted a closet. This is my second van and my first van had very little storage and no closet, which was kind of inconvenient. So this one's got a big closet Woo with mirrors. And I have another drawer with clothes in there. And that is the best thing in the whole van, which is my suburban furnace. Um, it's very hot. And then I have the uh, thermostat just installed over here on the side. So I'm kind of spoiled when I'm cold. I just flip it on and it's hot. This is my pull-out table. It's just on wheels and it rolls in and out. And you can change how big it is. And under here is just more storage, which is a little disorganized right now. And under here is more storage, which actually goes all the way to the back of the van. And this weird door thing is actually made to store my sitar, which is not in here right now. <laughs> I put the sunroof in uh, because I don't have windows in here and I got a pretty good deal on the span. There were six of them on the lot. None of them had windows in it. So I wanted some light and windows in the back doors was really expensive. And this was only like 400 bucks. And I really like it because I have light and I can see what the sky is doing and I can see stars at night, um, but nobody can see in. So that's pretty awesome. The bed is just like uh, a memory foam mattress, a foam mattress. It ended up being a little bit thicker and cushier than I had sort of planned. So it's a little tight. I can sit up in there, but it's not like a ton of room, but I don't do a lot of sitting up in bed. I mostly just like sit at my little table and then I have that little uh, hyper vent stuff to keep air circulation under the mattress. I have a second roof vent. This one doesn't have a fan. 
but I just thought with the two roof vents, there's a bit of air circulation, especially if I turn the fan on. And I have a smoke detector back there, and I have a carbon monoxide LP detector on the floor. And the idea behind covering every single thing up with wood and insulation is so that there's no condensation on the metal. Uh, this climate, mostly I live in Vancouver and it's very humid here and the condensation is a real issue. So we're trying to avoid any kind of condensation problems. I usually sleep at a diagonal and I sleep at whatever end my head is the highest. So I move around in here. I feel pretty safe in here. Um, I've heard like sketchy stories from other people and I had someone like creep out my old van once camped uh, in Cottonwood, Arizona. They like, I think it was a ghost, but it's kind of a long story. Anyway, when I woke up, there was a handprint on the back of my van window, but I still jumped out in the middle of the night with flashlights running into the bushes looking for them. <laughs> Because that's kind of like, I don't know, my first thing is like, I want to know what's happening. Yeah. Rah, like, I'm coming to get you. I don't know. Like, I just, I do have a really sharp machete in here. That's good. <laughs> so I have uh, storage in the back, in this back area. Quite a lot of storage. Also, these doors are cool because they open all the way up around, which is nice. And then underneath I have my bike, and this is my inflatable kayak, and all my biking stuff, and I have a solar panel because I also have a goal zero in there, just like a little one. Um, table, chairs, that kind of stuff, and my battery is here, and it's a 100 amp hour AGM battery. It gets charged using an uh, Solenoid. It's a solenoid that's hooked up to the truck battery and the truck battery in this span is also an AGM battery so that works out as far as charging goes. My dad put that in and he pretty much built almost the entire van with me doing a lot of standing around holding things so yeah I don't entirely know everything but I kind of do. Um, this is the table from the back. Uh, we used tracks for a closet and then my dad made these little holders and wheels so that's how it slides out except I can't actually push it because it's locked in. I'll show you this hypervent stuff from the other side actually it's kind of in a little piece. It's like this plastic stuff it lets air flow under the mattress it's actually used in boats so I bought it at a marine supply store it's quite expensive, but totally worth it. And it definitely keeps the mattress from getting moldy or any kind of condensation under there. Um, but yeah, it was recommended to me by another RV person and it works really good. There's actually five inch thick uh, pink fiberglass insulation in the main part of the wall. And then anywhere where metal was gonna touch wood, we tried to put um, the half inch blue foam in between the wood and the metal so we wouldn't get a heat transfer. And then we put this vapor barrier in there. The idea behind this foam is anywhere where the, the ribs of the van all the way around are covered in this foam. So all the ribs that we screwed into are covered in foam. Um, and then the ceiling is two inches of the same blue foam insulation. And the floor is an inch of the same insulation. Vancouver is really expensive and the rents are really expensive um, and I I've shared done some shared living in shared houses which is fine for like a little while but I'm pretty particular like about my living space and how I like to keep it and I don't really like sharing space with people and I, I can't really afford to live in a place without sharing because the rent is so high here and I don't want to spend a lot of money on rent so this van is my long-term plan now uh, because I'm making payments on the van, um, so I kind of have a mortgage. Um, but the idea behind building this van was I'm hoping to live in it for like the next 15 years at least. Uh, this is sort of my long-term housing solution. And it, I don't have to work, I don't work full time. I usually only work like 25-ish hours a week. If I want to work more, I can. My job's really flexible. I try to work a little more, save a little bit of money, and then try to leave every winter because I don't really like the winters here. 
So every winter I try to head down to the Rubber Trent Rendezvous in Quartzsite, Arizona. So that's sort of my long-term plan is uh, living in this van all year and going traveling to the desert for a couple months every year and then just coming back here and doing my thing. So me and another van dweller, we started a monthly van meetup in Vancouver for van dwellers on the first Sunday of every month at Spanish Banks. And everyone's welcome, any vehicle, any income level, anybody, you can just come and have a good time and yeah.